midnight, the howling of the dogs began again, and in a few minutes we saw a large grey shape with green eyes shining like lamps shamble swiftly down the path towards us. The rector started forward, but I laid a firm hand upon his arm and whispered a warning, Remember! Then we both stood very still and watched as the great beast cantered swiftly by. It was real enough, for we could hear the clicking of its nails on the stone flags. It passed within a few yards of us, and seemed to be nothing more nor less than a great grey wolf, thin and gaunt, with bristling hair and dripping jaws. It stopped where the mist commenced, and turned round. It was truly a horrible sight, and made one's blood run cold. The eyes burned like fires, the upper lip was snarling and raised, showing the great canine teeth, while round the mouth clung and dripped a dark coloured froth. It raised its head and gave tongue to its long wailing howl, which was answered from afar by the village dogs. After standing for a few moments, it turned and disappeared into the thickest part of the fog. Our efforts to find wonderful, gruesome stories about the Cotswolds for Halloween this year has resulted in discovering a whole bundle of wonderful, ancient tales. So we've decided to put together a little compilation.